All right, peeps, on today's episode of The Kung Fu Genius, the genius will be answering all sorts of hot nonsense from one of our Patreons. Lots of gems, lots of Bruce Lee hanging out with Bill G, lots of, hey, British guys, it's Jim Chow, not Sham Wow. Let's get to it. And every day, I practice martial arts. Watch <laughs> out. Yo, Dre, how you doing, man? Yo, Sifu, how you doing, man? Good, man. Here we are at the uh, KFG layer again for we another at, episode. We're at the layer. Uh, yes. It seems that now, you know, we have kind of the, uh, well, it's not a problem, but we have an opposite situation from what we had through most of season three, <laughs> where you were all the way out in Jersey and couldn't oh, yeah. make it. And yes. now, and now you live two blocks away, and we're like, "Yo, why are we even bothering going to the school that only affects Mikey? He's yeah. got to come out here." Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but we're like right over here, so it, why not just record it, just it here at the sense. KFG layer, right? right? And we got look, perfect. we got these new mics. I hope. Uh, oh my god! You know, we got sexy. the new cameras, but the first episode we did with the new cameras, it came out grainy because the settings weren't right because we're so uh-huh. used to low tech using the iPhone video, which is very high quality, but you don't have to do shit for it. And then we get like fancy cameras, which are better, but you have to do shit for it to make mm. it look good. And I think we've, we've managed to, to fix it. But greatness. now this is the first episode with the new mics. New mics. So it's possible that this audio is ass until we figure out something. <laughs> and then eventually, I, in, uh, for five episodes into season four, we'll get it figured in out. My ear sounds great, though. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I sound good. You sound kind of ass. Wow. Wow. Kind of. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a Patreon question Patreon today, question. and uh, I also just have a general rant I want to uh, get into. I was ask you a question before yeah. we begin. Have yeah. you seen the uh, We Are the World documentary on Netflix? It's I like, have. It's, oh, it's it fantastic. was fantastic. awesome. Really? I, did we you are even the world. know that was on? No, I didn't know that. Oh, you yeah. have to see yeah, it. It just came yeah. out. Yep. It's like, like just like the thriller documentary, similar oh, kind of wow. vibe. And it's like, you're seeing them all together, and yeah. all the egos, and when they start asking each other other for like autographs oh, and stuff like that it's wow. Sheila e feeling used they had to do to it to all print. in one night wow yeah and lionel richie is the producer who he had to get everyone together it's uh-huh. so crazy he's the telling the story on the ceiling? Yeah, well he's well, well, he, they were dancing up there that's for sure wow. he's telling the story from his perspective wow and it's all right i'll check that out i'll check that out uh, just a reminder for those of you who want to support us patreon.com slash the kung fu genius is the best way to support the Kung Fu Genius Podcast yeah, for as way. little as $5 a month. You get access to episodes early, special goodies, uh, Instagram subscriber reels, and I love those. at higher levels of support, you get all sorts of other goodies, including like a private episode. And it's also a direct line to chat with me. Uh, right now, we only take questions for the episodes uh, through Patreon. So ask right. me anything has to be through Patreon. We take, uh, we still take uh, ideas about episodes or topics people want us to talk about oh, through yeah. the YouTube comments. But uh, for direct questions, you got to be on Patreon uh, because we need to get uh, Mikey Dean some uh, uh, health insurance. So let's oh, uh, that's right. support us on Patreon. That All is right. right. That is true. So here, uh, here we go. So we have uh, we have one from our Patreons uh, to kick it off. Dude, uh, go ahead. I have there. it right here. All right. Uh, this one is from Robert Drieben. All right. All right, that's the, I don't know, my girls are making some noise in the background. That's the hazard of recording at home. All right, so Robert Dreben says, wow, welcome back and thanks for the reply. Mm -hmm. Okay, a KFG question if it hasn't already been covered. Do you think, he's referring to you. Yeah, I would assume so because it's from a message to me. Not referring to me or No, no, usually who would, who would. Who would? Yeah, go ahead. Some people would. I don't know. On the down low... Wang Sheng Lung, since they were close friends, completely. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Since they were close friends, completed Bruce Lee's WT in terms of teaching him the forms he didn't get, such as Bilji, Jong, and Chi Gurk, etc. Mm. Um, could you just pronounce his name again for us, please? Billy Jean. 
So what if you could transport back in time for a front row seat into the life and legacy of one of the most respected Wing Chun masters in history? Gong Sao Wang, a tribute, direct students on Sifu Wang Shunlung offers you just that. Through a series of exclusive conversations, 25 direct students share anecdotes, reflections, and personal stories offering in-depth understanding of the man behind the legend. Order your copy today across 12 Amazon marketplaces with free shipping. I absolutely love this book and I think you'll find it an indispensable part of your collection. I can't recommend it enough. Get yours today. Go to Amazon, type in Gong Sao Wong, and there you go. Okay. So, uh, great question. Uh, so a couple of things, um, one, um, it, it's a small little nitpicky thing, but you know, if, if my, if I have a role, it's potentially as a ed, 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 educator. Yeah. Um, so These, this is your forte. So w T. So uh -huh. um W T, the W T spelling of Wing Chun, W I N G, second uh -huh. word, T is in Thomas, S U N, which is the lineage I'm from, yeah. from, from Larung Tang. Bruce Lee is, never is not a, yeah, it's not a generic spelling of Wing Chun. So okay. it's very important uh not to use that. And that's, you know, I look, I'm no longer a representative of Larung Tang, but I mean spellings and things like this matter. W I N G C H U N is generally considered the um, let's say the Generic spelling, all right, because it, it's 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 how most people spell it, and it doesn't necessarily. So, uh, um, it, it's not for one specific lineage. Then, so if I went to Pathmark and I went to find Wing Chun cereal, it would be spelled C H U N. C -H -U -N gotcha. Yes, yeah, it would be. I, I would put it to you this way: uh, it would be weird if Pathmark sold the cereal with any other spelling of Wing Chun. Got it. Uh, got it. So, uh, and then the other spelling, um, which is V, the V I N G T S U N. That is, I suppose, for all intents and purposes, also kind of a generic spelling because it is the spelling that Yip Man and Co. decided for when they um, formed the Wing Chun Athletic Association. Same pronunciation. Same pronunciation. I mean, that, that's Same the thing. Character. It's not Ving Chun, certainly not Ving to Sun or <laughs> Wing to Sun or anything like that, right? Uh, it was so, so the VT spelling... Mm -hmm is generally regarded as kind of how Yip Man himself spelled it. Uh, you know, although it, it, it's not entirely clear if he really was the one who pulled the plug on that. I think how, how, um, how you phoneticize Chinese words, I, I, I'm not sure Yip Man himself gave that much of a shit about those things because he was not aiming to teach Westerners. So how it's spelled in, in, in our alphabet is, I, see. I think, was completely irrelevant for him because if he wanted to write Wing Chun, he used the two Chinese characters. He would, the, the spelling of it w really wouldn't matter. It was only because Hong Kong was a British colony. Mm -hmm. So when you formed an association or you formed a business, you had to have a, a transliteration of those Chinese words in, 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 in our alphabet. Could you imagine Mikey Dean in those days? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine the way he would spell stuff? Oh, all my wrong God. In British y. All right. In Hong How Kong. How dare you? Yes. Oh, in wait, wait, wait. In, in Hong Kong. In, you know, yeah, I don't know. Mikey one, Dean in Hong Kong. Something belonged to us 50s. for a while. But we're the ones that spell it wrong. I see yes, how this yes, is. Yeah. Well, it, it, both of those things can be true. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, you Brits did run Hong Kong for a while. Oh, and for yes, a while. you spelled everything wrong in Cantonese. Oh, all right. Both of, the, both of these things can be true. Okay. All <laughs> right. Not, but they could okay. be. So, so, so uh, I'll They're give you, not. I'll give you, I'll give you a quiz here, Dre. All right. There's a section of Hong Kong. All oh, right? yes. It's actually the section of Kowloon where Yip Man started teaching and it's called Sam Soi Bo. Sam Soi Bo. Close enough. Close how would enough. you, how would you spell that? Sam Soi Bo. S-U-M. Mm -hmm. S-O-Y. Mm -hmm. B-O. Okay, not a not a bad spelling. Do you want to know how those assholes spelled how did he spell it? Spell those it? British assholes spelled how did he it. How spell this? Okay, some soy bowl, right? S H A M. I'm sorry, sham? that's sham, sir. He sham. Spelled it sham. Then soy. S H U I. I'm sorry, that's shui. All right, and then bowl. P O. <laughs> Okay, they got all three of those Chinese characters as wrong as possible. First of all, there's no left. There's no sound in Cantonese phonetics. Okay, uh, so God, you imagine all British. of these dudes walking around these Hong Kong British with that accent. Go, I want to go to Sham Shui Po, yeah. right? And the Chinese people going like, uh, uh? "What are you saying?" All right, no, like, yeah, good job. All right, I'm just saying. Okay, second quiz. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Wow. Another section of mm-hmm. Kowloon, which we spent a lot of time at. It's where we saw where we had our famous encounter with oh, Van Damme. Yeah, good old okay. section. Tim Sa Choi. Tim Sa Choi. Oh, How I would you that. spell Tim Sa Choi? I would go with a uh, J I M mm-hmm. S A. Yeah. C H O I. Yeah, not bad. C H O Y, but it should be Choi. Maybe J J U I J E U I, something like that, right? Yeah. Do you want to know how those assholes spelled it? How do they spell Jim it? Tim Choi. Jim. Okay. T S I M. T S I M. Uh, Sa. S H A. I'm sorry. Sha. That's Sha. All right. Sha. Okay. So T S U I. All right. So yeah. Damn. All right. Damn, these guys. Not really a good uh, Damn, a batting guys, average there. Man. Also, uh, do, you, uh, do you know how to actually say Hong Kong in Cantonese? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Kong with a G. All right. What do those jerk offs spell it with? A K. All right. Hong Kong. Do you know Chinese martial Kong. arts is a generic term, although it's not really accurate? It doesn't really mean martial arts, but Kung Fu, Kung. All right. Yeah. Kung sounds like what? A G sound, right? Yeah. Do you know how those assholes spelled it? With a K. <laughs> All right. And now I have to be the Kung Fu genius yeah. instead of the Gung Fu genius. Ah, uh, right? yes. That is. Yeah. So see? See the um, problems that Kung. their colonialism. Uh, started. Some call it problems. Others might call it solutions. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah. You know, we we corrected it. Uh huh. It was corrected you know it. Yeah. corrected it. That's we some, made it better. That's some shi- <laughs> that's some shinings. That's some Delbert Grady from Shining stuff. <laughs> we I corrected them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so anyway, that's their way. Uh, so uh, when 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 you talk about Wing Chun generically, mm-hmm. uh, you shouldn't use the WT spelling because that spelling is specifically the Leung Ting lineage or people who are you know derived from the Leung Ting lineage. The VT spelling can be considered a little more generic. Although at this point, the people who use the VT spelling. They usually, they've been using it for a while and they like to give us a lot of wonks and young people use the VT spelling. I would say most of them use that spelling. Um, and then some other, um, you know, traditional adherents use that spelling as well. I think Moyet, they also use that spelling as well. So, uh, but it's always pronounced the same. All right. So anyway, if we're talking about Wong Sun Leung or Bruce Lee, we should not be using the WT spelling because uh, neither one of those gentlemen learned from Leung Ting. Okay. Um, and, and so, uh, so anyway, that's like a very, very small thing I have to say about that. Also the third form. Biu, Biu. It's B-I-U. It's so not, it's not, it's not Bill. It's not Bill. All right. There's no, uh, there's no Cantonese this sound. This whole time I thought it was Bill. Yeah, so you and Robert Downey Jr. I right? remember when he went on uh, David Letterman and he was telling David Letterman how he learned the Bill G yes. form and then he was like, who Bill who? Who's Bill who? <laughs> yeah. Pew, <laughs> pew. Because Biu, that <laughs> character, is, uh, is the first tone. It's the highest tone. Mm-hmm. There's some people that feel that they hear almost like an unaspirated L at the end, kind of trailing off Biu. Mm. But you have to really... You have to really wish upon a star and think really deep to really actually hear that. You have to, you have to make yourself uh, so want to hear it. All right? Assholes that did that. Yeah. So, so it, it, it no, no, no. Uh, that is just because there's no standard uh, phonetization of Cantonese. I think the first time I ever saw Biu spelled like B I L, I think it was actually William Chung in his, in his first Biu G book. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I, I mean, look. Most people who grew up in Hong Kong and speak Cantonese are native speakers. How they spell those words in our alphabet is not something they learn in school. Really, the only Cantonese they learn to spell in our alphabet are their name. So if their name is Wong something something, then they learn some phonetization, whether it's accurate or not. And then, of course, they probably know how to spell the areas of town in in the British way because that's where it's posted, right? But if you just go up to someone, uh, a, you know, just like a random high school kid who, you know, of average or above average intelligence, and you said, okay, like, I have a Chinese sentence, can you transcribe it into our alphabet for me? They would struggle figuring out, like, uh, how to spell certain things because it's not something that they learn. 
the only people that really know that are people who teach Cantonese to foreigners. God. So they have to learn some kind of system like Yu Ping or uh, the Yale system or something like that. But uh, otherwise, they wouldn't have it. But still, you have to go to a Brit. Hopefully not. Yeah. All right. Um, Make that happen. Exactly. So, uh, so anyway, so, so that's just my, my little bit of a throat clearing about the kind of spellings and stuff there. Right. (laughs) Um, so the question was, um, because like, because of their friendship and because they were close, um, you know, do, do I think that Bruce, like a Wong Sunline would have taught Bruce all this more advanced stuff, uh, a little earlier. Right. And, uh, I've talked about this before, but this is, this is, this is where you kind of get in, um, in, in, in trouble with JKD guys, because JKD guys, for the most part, there are obviously exceptions. They don't really know much about Wing Chun. And most of what they know about Wing Chun gets filtered through the very narrow lens of JKD's take on Wing Chun. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's about like a couple trapping drills and chi sao and sensitivity and a couple, you know, Pax out back fist, laps out back fist, fake down low, go up high, you know, but basically enter the dragon and fists of fury. What Bruce Lee, the Wing Chun he does in both of those movies for the most part is most of what you see the JKD guys okay. doing. Right. And then, okay, they throw a low kick or something like that. Right. And then, oh, and Wing Chun, according to them, doesn't have footwork, doesn't have this, doesn't have that. So, so they kind of disregard the most of it and just use these kind of hand movements or something like that. Right. Um, and then of course they're, when, when you tell uh, some JKD people this, they, they don't understand that Bruce Lee was not a fully qualified Wing Chun instructor when he came to the U.S. And that's very difficult for some people to believe because, after all, he is Bruce, uh, Bruce Mother Mkin Lee, right? right? You know what I right. mean? What do you mean he wasn't fully qualified, what? right? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if we really drill down on the heart, like timeline as to when Bruce started learning Wing Chun, which would have been after he got kicked out of La Salle and he went to St. Francis Xavier, then he really could not have had more than two years of Wing Chun training. And that, that would be being slightly um, gracious to him. It was probably more like a year and a half. Now, when you tell people that, um, it always depends on the paradigm from which they come from, all right? So if you have one person who hears, well, Wing Chun is a style that can be mastered in a very short period of time, right? Or it can be learned in a very short period of time. There's people who subscribe to that trope. And then they say, well, then therefore, even if Bruce only learned Wing Chun for a year and a half, then he could have ostensibly learned everything he needed to learn, okay? So, so that's why when you say like, what, like people who will hear that Bruce Lee only learned for a short time will then further filter it through, well, you can learn Wing Chun very quickly and it doesn't take very long to learn Wing Chun. Therefore, uh, he must have learned enough. Therefore, he must have learned it all. Therefore, he must be qualified, right? Oh, yeah. So that's why even to a certain segment, when you say that he only learned for a year and a half, uh, it doesn't change anything for them because of the, they think Wing Chun can be learned in six minutes or something like that, right? <coughs> so then you, so you have that faction, all right? Then uh, there's other factions that are like, uh, are going to say, yeah, but you have to look at the level of training that he got and then they're going to pad his credentials in that short period of time. They can say, look, he was learning from Yip Man, all right, which we all know during the time that Bruce was learning Wing Chun, he, he wasn't actually learning that much from his Sifu. Uh, Yip Man at that time was going through a lot of personal issues, uh, not the most, uh, uh, it, I, I suppose, problematic of all of them was, was his opium addiction at that time, meaning that Yip Man himself was not teaching many of the classes himself. That was left to many of the senior students, ergo, Bruce actually really learning from Wong Sun Leung. Um, and uh, so then, but, but people don't really know that. So they go, look, he learned from Yip Man and he learned from Wong Sun Leung and he learned from William Chang, right? So he had all these great guys who are teaching all this. Stuff. So of course he's going to be so much better than everyone else. Okay. Um, when, when the truth is that even at the time that Bruce was learning, I don't think William Chang was considered an instructor. All right. Because remember there were no certificates, it was just like, you're the C. Hing, you started before, so you help out the juniors, and at some point, maybe you open your own school, but it's very ambiguous, all right? So w- when, when someone could be considered an instructor or not in those days, because Yip Man didn't give certificates, didn't say, you know, unless he showed up to the opening of your school, 
Okay. That was probably the closest you can get to an endorsement. Okay, you are like legit and can teach because I'm showing up to the opening of your school. Huh. Like he did for Leungting and Moyat and Ho Kam Ming and many of his students. Um, that was the endorsement because you weren't getting a certificate. All right. So when, you know, Leung Ting had his big grand opening of his, the Leung Ting gym, there was Yip Man and they had the martini glass and right. there he is and other people were there, Lock Yu and all those guys were at Leung Ting school at the opening and there, there it was, right? Uh, there was your, there was your that stamp, was so to speak, yeah. right? That's your street cred. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but um, certainly by the time William Chung had left Hong Kong, he didn't necessarily have that, all right? It uh, doesn't mean that he wasn't qualified to teach or that he, he couldn't have been an instructor, but he didn't have his own school. So was, was he considered an instructor in the general Wing Chun family? Well, that, that I'm not too sure about, right? Um, and, and so... Um, Interesting. Uh, yeah. So then the question is, well, you know, if, if Bruce was so close to Wong Sun Leung, like, couldn't, have, couldn't Wong Sun Leung have, have taught him all these things, all right? So uh, a couple of things I have to say about that. Uh, first thing is that uh, this is probably a question that's much better suited for someone like Sipa David Peterson, who was a student of Wong Sun Leung. I mean, so he, he most likely heard things directly from the horse's mouth, as, 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 as you will, that, that could, could answer this in a, in a more direct or complete way. So I'm, you know, uh, I'm kind of going off of, you know, things that I've heard other people say or whatever. So I'm completely open to being corrected on, on any of these points. Um, the first thing is, it's, is the amount of time that Bruce Lee learned Wing Chun. Okay. So, um, it, I think it's a little harder for people to understand nowadays because you have YouTube university and you have all these people like master Wong and stuff like, Oh, here, do, do this university. BG technique. Oh, you never did Wing Chun before. Here's a BG technique against a, against a jab. Here's a one dummy move, right? Uh, here's a, here's a thing with the pole. Here's, here's this. Or so people like, uh, who, who have not learned proper Wing Chun from a Sifu are kind of assembling this thing like a pastiche in a buffet line. All right. Oh, nice. Uh, there's like, take a little bit of this, <laughs> yeah. slop this on your plate. And it's like, you, you can't, you can't learn a martial art, but, uh, as if like you would look at all the concepts and techniques and ideas of this system as a buffet and just grabbing some of these things and putting it on a plate and thinking that this thing is going to be digestible. Right. Um, if you're a martial and that offends some martial artists because because one they want if they're if they already have a foundation they want to feel well yeah but i'm already let's say a karate expert so i could look at wing chun and take some things in wing chun that could help my karate okay that's one thing i'm not talking about those people oh, i'm not talking about you. people who are actually an expert in something and then you know come come around the corner to look at some wing chun training see some of that stuff and go oh okay, I, I like some of these simultaneous actions i like some of these low line kicks and taking that. That, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people who actually purport to be doing Wing Chun. And I can say this because I've been teaching Wing Chun for over 20 years. And, you know, every once in a while you get an email from just people like, oh, I taught myself Wing Chun from books, or I taught myself Wing Chun from this video series, or I taught myself Wing Chun from YouTube. And thinking that that puts them on par with people who've actually been learning it step by step, as if somehow, you know, Yip Man, this, this poor rube, had to actually learn from a real Sifu and his sea hangs and had to actually practice and train and, and, and really get good at this and internalize it and improve it. And then when he came to Hong Kong, you know, had to modify it according to what his students needed, like, you know, putting in the real hard work. Oh no, that's okay. I can just go and watch Sifu XYZ doing the Sunum Tao form, copy it and then got it. All right, next. All yeah. right. Like, like people don't Bob realize, copy. yeah, people don't realize, even if you have access to everything available in Wing Chun, via YouTube university or whatever. All right. Uh, you still got to actually train it and do it. You still got to put in the time. I mean, it's one thing you just do a punch and circle and do something like this. And Oh, okay. I know. Yep. Do you know why we do this? Do you mm. know what the fine points are? Do you know how this is applied? Do you know the reason why he mm. was repeated so often in the form? You when you yeah, do it and wrong. who's correcting you when, yeah, when you do it wrong or you're not even looking <laughs> at something in the right way. Right. So there's this weird thing that like, People think they can just go and teach themselves by uh, osmosis. And, and, and worst of all, uh, oftentimes these people don't even just follow one guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I'm not talking about the people who are already martial Wing artists. Chung Gumbo. Yeah, who are already martial artists and they're just like looking at a couple things that they want to maybe take or, or, or integrate. I'm talking about people who really think they're teaching themselves Wing Chun. They take the Sunum Tao from this guy, the Chum Q from that guy, a Chi Sao idea from here. And it's not even cohesive within like 
uh, uh, it doesn't even have like a singular worldview within the Wing Chun paradigm. And then they're wondering why they can't get these things to work, right? Well, the one Sifu tells you you're supposed to block with Bong Sao, the other Sifu tells you you're supposed to cut the attack off and intercept. What are you going to do when someone fires a punch at you? You're going to oh, block no. it with Bong Sao or you're going to intercept? The moment you have to make that decision, you've already been punched. Yeah. All right. So this idea no. that you can kind of just paper mache this shit together oh. if you watch enough videos is the, uh, is erroneous, right? Um, because the practice is missing, the guidance is missing, and I I find and I may be projecting here, and I'm open to people interpreting it as such. Nowadays, there are a lot of Wing Chun people that just want to meet in the park and slap the shit out of each other. All right. Which, which, which like I get slap the whole, the, with the hot, with the mops. hot my, I slap <laughs> slapping each other with the hot mops. All right. God. And you know, in an effort to kind of test and see what's what I get it. Right. Mm. You want to put gloves on, you want to do that. Okay, fine. But those guys are normally not willing to actually learn Wing Chun step by step. They want to just, and, and they want to think, especially if they're bigger and stronger. Okay. If I throw my weight around, uh, to, to be able to manhandle smaller, weaker people, uh, that oh. therefore the Wing Chun that I'm doing must be correct instead of it being like, no, you're just a bigger, stronger dude beating someone maybe with less experience than you or something like that. Right. Or someone who's not naturally a good fighter. Um, and they're the ones that don't want to be told like, yeah, well, you can't do bong so up here, for example, that wouldn't make sense. Or like the way you're stepping is going to open you up to get kicked because you need to go in a jam. Like, so, so I find that people think that solely by, putting on gloves and slapping each other around and not doing the hard work of learning things step by step and having someone correct them is, is the way to go. Right. Um, and so I find it's like really super unserious. So the problem is when answering a question like this, you have a lot of modern day attitudes that don't match the way things were back then. <laughs> and that is actually a, uh, story. It's one of the historians fallacies, which is that when you look at things the way they are now, like our attitudes towards uh, martial arts, our attitudes mm -hmm. towards learning or training or pop culture, the, the fact that we have access, like you, you have a, look, I, I was telling my daughters, I said, in the 80s, oh, if yeah. you told me that I was, going to, uh, I was going to pay for something using my phone, I would be like, huh? Wow. Right. Or I'm going to look up something on my phone. It would actually be yeah. an absurd statement. Yeah, right. Going to the rotary. Exactly. Right. Like it, it but, but now you have, number. you have access to pretty much anything through your phone. Right. And, and so that changes how people perceive the speed of information, how quickly you're expected to learn something or, or see something when you could just go type in Buji form and then you have, you know, all sorts of seafoods all over the well, world we showing it, right? Before the, you had to go. To the wall and yeah, the other things. Yeah, it's like, well, you had, you had to read a book if you were lucky enough to get a book on it. Or you had to, oh, my God, learn it from an actual person who learned it. Oh, good. And then you would have to, I don't know, like train it and get good at it. But there's a thing like, okay, I've seen the Buji form. And then they kind of just mimic it. And they're like, okay, now what? And, and they're wondering why l learning a form, which is basically nothing more than just pantomiming movements in the air, mm. why it hasn't made them a fighter suddenly. It's because you don't actually know what that's for. And it hasn't been built up by the previous steps. You're mm. just skipping steps, right? Like you're learning the ABCs, but out of order. No, it's more, it's more like you're just trying to speak sentences, but you haven't yeah. learned the ABCs and oh, you haven't no. learned basic spelling, oh, right? Damn. But you can, you can maybe copy a couple words because you recognize that this thing together is the word elephant. Okay. But you don't know why it's pronounced that way or you don't know anything about it. And that's where I see a lot of, a lot of people nowadays, right? So many people are confused about basics in Wing Chun Chi Sao. Some view it as a collection of moves and masters confuse their own students by talking of principles and concepts without telling them what's what. The 15 Chi Sao Fundamentals is my attempt at explaining Wing Chun Chi Sao from a perspective of principles, but also with the basic techniques required to express those principles. It shows the framework for Hong Kong Wing Chun Chi Sao, in particular, the training of Pun Sao and Lap Da. This is necessary training before going on to the higher and more spontaneous expression of Chi Sao. Right now, if you use the code KFG Chi Sao, you can get a signed copy of my book for the price of the unsigned one. Click on the link in the description below and use the code KFG Chi Sao at checkout to get a signed copy of this full color, over 230 page manual on the vital foundational training exercise of Wing Chun. This offer is good while supplies last, so get yours today. Now, of course, look, 
your mileage may vary. There are a lot of really traditional schools that won't ever teach you how to fight. So, I mean, the idea that doing things in a traditional way or whatever is the way to go. No, it's certainly not. But it's not binary. It's not like, well, the traditional way was so slow and didn't emphasize blah, blah, blah. Ergo, just teach yourself everything really fast and that's the solution. No, no, no. The, the solution is you need a, a properly qualified Sifu who can bring you through the steps. And those steps include how to apply these things in fighting and in chi sao and all this kind of stuff and build up your application base and your knowledge base based on interactive partner practice that's guided by a competent coach or trainer, right? Uh, and, and so one of these historians' fallacies is when we look at our modern martial arts scene with our current culture, the way we look at things, the access of information we have, we often, even though we know there were no smartphones in 1950, hmm. there's still kind of a tacit feeling in your mind that attitudes were the same back then. Hmm. All right. Now there's certain things about humans and human nature that are always, that have always been the same since the beginning, but it's actually incorrect from a historian's perspective to superimpose modern day attitudes and paradigms onto people from a different time period. Okay. You can maybe get away with it within a couple of years, maybe within a certain decade or something like that. But you cannot say the way people look at martial arts now, which is much more cosmopolitan, much more multicultural average Wing Chun person has seen Thai boxing and boxing and karate and has seen these things. So they're now operating with a lot more information. You cannot assume that that is how people saw it in the fifties. Okay. Where it was like, wow, to even learn something like the Sunum Tao form from a Sivu was like a really big deal. And then you would go and you would practice it. Because yeah. if you got really good at this, then maybe Sivu is going to teach you something else. But now when you have nothing but instant gratification via your phone, uh, you, don't you don't need to fight to learn those things. There's no real earning of it, right? So if we come back to, okay, why did Wong Sanung not like teach Bruce all these things? Well, first of all, it is possible that Wong Sanung did teach Bruce some things that, let's say, given the time that Bruce Lee was learning Wing Chun, he otherwise normally would not be qualified to learn. It would take him a little bit longer before, let's say, if he was in the ye old Yip Man school, before the old man would show him that. But maybe because Wong Sanung was a little younger and, you know, was interested in fighting, he would say, hey, you know, hey, hey Bruce, like, you know, here, here's something from the Buji or, you know, he's like a thing from the dummy or something like that, right? Um, and it's not out of the realm of possibility that he may have, in fact, taught Bruce some of those forms. Right. It seems unlikely, given what we know about what Bruce Lee did on the wooden dummy. It's pretty clear that Bruce Lee did not know the wooden dummy form, but he knew, you know, how to, I mean, and I write about this in my wooden dummy book, available in the link below, that you can look at the wooden dummy as just like a, it's just a training tool, Okay. But also within the Wing Chun system, there's also a form to be done on there that you learn when you're qualified. And then the movements in those form, in, in that form are then later applied in, in Chi Sao and in Gua Sao, And then ultimately in your free fighting and, and especially in the case of the wooden dummy in a lot of clinch based situations. Right. So it's not just it's not like, oh, you learn the form. Now, you know, wooden dummy. No, you got to learn the form. Then you got to take that form and then you got to drill it in Chi Sao. Then you have to randomize it in some kind of chi self sparring, and then you have to put it in the free fighting. All right. And then once, once you can do that, you have it, but just the form that's like, imagine you have form, mm -hmm. then you have to learn it in chi sao, then you have to do it in gua sao and sparring, and then you have to do it in fight. It's like four steps. And most people learn the form and they're like, yeah, I learned the dummy. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, what do you mean? You know it. All right. You, you, you can pantomime Paralyze movements it. in front of a piece of wood. Okay. So how do you use Tan Sao Dai Zhang? How do you use the Tai Sak Gok? How do you, why do we even have chain kicks? Why do we have the cross step? All right. Why, why do we have this Sakeng combination in the dummy, which seems to be a repeat of what we do in Buji? Is it there for the same reason? Is it something else? All right. What is Popeye for? How is Popeye applied? Right. Why do we have Kaupek? All right. All these things, right? Uh, no, uh, I, I meant I learned the dummy form. Okay. Uh... So you literally know nothing. Okay, because you can buy, you can buy any, you can buy my book and teach yourself the form, but that doesn't mean you could, as the RZA once said, fight your way out of a wet paper bag with scissors in your hands. All right, okay, and that's that's always the problem. It's like, what is the threshold for learning the dummy? Like learning the form, and then 
All right, you can do a neck pull on the dummy. Do you know how to apply the neck pull? Do you know how to defend the neck pull? Do you know all the different things you can do in Wing Chun once you get a neck pull? No. So you don't know the dummy. You know a form, okay? <laughs> and if you could do the Siunam Tao form from A to Z, but you didn't know what Tan, Gan, Fok, any of those things were for, then you don't really know Siunam Tao. You just know a form, all right? And Wing Chun people need to slow their role that just learning some choreography means, oh, yeah, I got it. You got what? All right? That, that, that's, that's like a, a, a boxer, uh, a coach uh, teaching shadow boxing is jab, cross, hook, uppercut, some basic head movement, footwork. Okay, you got boxing. See you later. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see what I mean? It's like, right, you, right. Know, you have to learn timing and distance and how to apply this uh, against a resisting opponent, someone moving around. What are the liabilities of using this technique? If, if you use this technique wrong, how do you get out? How do you stay safe against this type of fighter? How do you fight someone who's, you know, when just orthodox versus southpaw? How do you train power? How do you, how do you do defense when you're getting your ass kicked? I mean, there's so much more to boxing than just learning four different punches and some head movement, right? So wh why do Wing Chun people think that if they learn the Siunam Tao form without knowing what those movements are for, without having practiced those movements in application, and then they say stuff like, I already know, I know the Siunam Tao. What are you talking about? All right, you pantomime movements in the air in a pigeon-toed stance. Slow your roll. All right, okay. It's obnoxious. Vision okay. told ass. Yeah. So, uh, so to come back, I don't know exactly what Wong Sun Lung taught Bruce Lee. I don't think that he would have taught him all these forms because um, there just wasn't enough time. Mm. It, Bruce is focused on learning how to fight. And also, it's, a, it's, it's an etiquette thing. Okay. And this is something Westerners don't understand because, like, well, that's not how I learned it in my school. Oh, from your Western seafood who doesn't know shit about Chinese culture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't, don't tell, don't use that as the example. Again, do not paste. Well, in my school, you could just learn everything like right away. You know, the seafood doesn't have any secrets. Okay. We're not talking about the merits of the system. We're talking about you implying this very narrow experience that only happens in your school and pasting it onto 1950s Hong Kong. All right. Like, like this is where they're making a mistake. You've been in my school. None of these things are secret. Ergo, it wasn't a secret for Yip Man. Ergo, everyone went, no, no, that, that those ergos are where you're fucking up, son. Okay. It's, it's, it's pasting right. what, what you, you're learning from Seville chuckle sticks in Minnesota. Your experiences. Yeah. Not and, experience. and then going like, yeah, you know, you know, like they, what do they say? Uh, uh, Re results not typical. All oh, right. In, yeah. in those, in yeah. the, the warning in the ads. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Your experience, not even. Uh, remotely the same as two generations before you. All right. So slow your roll. Right. So, so you don't think Bruce Lee in his, in his like desire and, and hunger went to Wang Sheng Lung and was like, come on, yo man, show me, show me that Buji shit. Yeah, he may have, but, but in terms of and etiquette, Wang was in, like, in, yeah, I'll show you it. Well, no, in, but well, under in the table, that's possible. Although I don't know. Uh -huh. I, I, um, uh, I've seen, uh, Bruce Lee perform uh, the photos of it of him doing Chum Q and him doing Siunam Tao. Never Buji. And yeah. I think that he, he probably would have filmed it if he, if, because oh, yeah. he had filmed the other forms. He probably would have filmed it if he had learned it. I don't think he learned it. And then according to for himself. A, yeah, because he had videos of him doing the other forms um, and didn't film himself doing the wooden dummy techniques because I don't think he learned them. Um, they did say that when he was in Hong Kong, either in 63 or 65, that he went to Leung Sung to learn the Buji form. Uh, and I've heard that from a couple different places, but I can't substantiate that. That is, that is for all intents and purposes, a hearsay. <laughs> Why didn't he go to Wong Sung Leung to learn? Okay, well, perhaps. What people don't understand is um, if someone is your Sifu, mm -hmm. They're the ones who normally teach you this stuff, all right? Your Sifu is the one who teaches you Buji. Your Sifu is the one who teaches you the Wunda. I mean, not your Siheng, mm -hmm. okay? Um, because that would be considered the Siheng going over the Sifu's head. The Sifu is the one that decides whether you learn this next thing. Partially, there could be a financial motivator. The Sifu, the Sifu yep. also gets the red packet to, yeah. to, for the Buji and then teaches you. And then once you learn it, then your Siheng can correct you because you've already learned it, right? right. Westerners go... It's so weird. It's so controlling. Dude, no, it, it's it, deal with it. It's Chinese yeah. culture. All right. And it's still that way in many Wing Chun schools. And um, this obviously can be abused by tyrannical Sifus. But I also think that, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad thing that you have one person, almost like a main trainer, or a main coach mm -hmm. that looks at you and can decide 
when He's it's ready. time for you to learn something, right? Rather than like one of your overly ambitious uh, uh, elder Kung Fu brothers. It's like, yeah, I'll teach you over here. Maybe uh, not knowing, not having the breadth of experience of the Sifu, right? Now, of course, of course, if the Sifu is a jerk or a tyrant or just wants more money, okay. Yeah, of course, the system can be abused. I'm talking about if the system works as it should. Mm-hmm. All right, you have that one person who really takes you on as, as uh, your mentor and then decides and then can tell the juniors, okay, now I've, I've taught so-and-so Buji. Now you can go and correct him and practice it with him, right? So Wong Sonung may have not, and again, this would be a question much better suited for David Peterson, mm-hmm. may not have been in a position to teach Yip Man. Cause don't forget, Bruce Lee's Sifu is Yip Man, not Wong Sonung. Wong Sonung is a Sihang. So out of respect to Yip Man, Wong, Wong Sonung may have been told not to teach Bruce Lee that stuff. And it just may not have been correct until Yip Man taught him himself. And then when Bruce came back in, what, 65, uh, he uh, asked Yip Man to teach him the Buji form, and, or sorry, the wooden dummy form, and Yip Man refused, uh, which a lot of people have made a big deal about, but it, it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. It's actually pretty normal. Uh, yeah. And then also uh, Yip well, Man... It's probably like, I didn't even teach you Buji. How, <laughs> yeah, that's how, the other thing I, too. Why, why yeah, people always go, how come we didn't teach him? I'm like, well... yeah. Um, because there was nothing to indicate that Bruce had learned the Buji form. Right. And uh, when, when you look at the canonical order of forms by the Vatican in, in, in the 50s, they have uh, <laughs> deemed it Siunam Tao Chum Buji, then wooden dummy. Now, there's some people that go, no, you can learn the first 60 movements of the wooden dummy after Chum Q. There's some students, especially in the middle period, who say that you, a student can learn the first 60 movements. Now, first of all, I don't give a shit if that's how people do it in their school. Uh, it doesn't... People are like, no, it shouldn't be that way, or it should be like, who cares? Mm. Sifu's responsible for their own students, right? What, what people don't realize is a part of the reason why some of Yip Man's students uh, teach the first 60 movements of the wooden dummy after Chumkyu, and then they would learn Buji, and then you learn the, the remaining part of the form, is because that was actually something that Yip Man did in a uh, very brief period of his teaching career when he had a, a real issue with the opium. Because when he wasn't teaching, a lot of the students weren't sticking around. So to entice students to say, he would say, oh, I'll teach you the first 60 movements of the dummy, right? Because normally they would have to wait. Because the dummy has always been the catch in Wing Chun. Like, everyone wants to learn that thing, right? So uh, that then uh, became kind of a bit of a um, hook to get people to stay. Hook me. Yeah, and that's why you won't see it in the early period students, in the earliest period students, and you won't see it in the latter period students, but in kind of a it's even slightly before the middle period, it's almost mid fifties, early sixties, people mm-hmm. who kind of learned in that pocket have this kind of, uh, learn the 60 moves of the dummy first before that. Right. But th- th- there's a lot of evidence to indicate that this was a temporary fad within the Yip Man school to kind of keep people around and paying. And also so he could charge a packet for the dummy mm-hmm. to perhaps also sustain his habit. All right. So, so I think, People underestimate how much some of these social issues that were going on, in particular with Grandmaster Yip Man, affected how things were taught. And then these people will defend these things to the death, not even fully understanding the context of why the old man even did these things, right? So, um, this, like I said, this question would be better for the C for David Peterson. I, don't, I can't s- sit here and tell you exactly what... You have him on your show. I have had him on the show before. Uh, before, uh, before we launched the podcast officially, I had him on the Kung have, Fu Genius uh, channel. And we also had him on Dudes of Kung Fu once. And, and our boys at uh, Kung Fu Conversations, I think, just had uh, Sifu David Peterson on there. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's about, about time uh, that, we, uh, that, 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 that we see each other. It's been, it's been so long, all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so let me see. We're a little pressed for time today, but I did want to actually discuss something before... Um, uh, before we got out of here, something that uh, from a comment on YouTube, um, uh, which I think uh, makes a great, uh, you know, a great topic in and of its own. Right. So so um, th- it, it's kind of about Bruce Lee fanboys. All right. And so uh, obviously, uh, as the Kung Fu genius, uh, my main topics on this channel are Wing Chun and Bruce Lee. All yeah. right. All things related to Wing Chun, all things related to Bruce Lee. I'm not primarily a Bruce Lee channel, but uh, we do obviously we hit do the topic of, I mean, even yeah. today we're talking about Wing Chun, but still somehow yeah. it's a Bruce Lee topic, right? Yeah. Um, and, it's synonymous. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of become one of my sub-specializations, you know, talking about Bruce Lee. Uh-huh. Um, 
And so, uh, as a result, I get kind of bombarded with a lot of the emotional baggage of Bruce Lee fans because you have Bruce Lee fans run the gamut from like, um, people who are like such fanboys that they believe that like the corpse of Bruce Lee could, could literally rise, walk into UFC and beat a heavyweight. Right. Uh, and that he was like some, you know, unbeatable martial arts master. And, uh, you know, they want him to believe that, or they want to believe that this guy could like defy physics. Uh, and then, and then, and then on the other hand, you have like, you have such haters that, uh, you know, I'm okay with people not liking Bruce Lee. I mean, like if, um, what's weird is like, sometimes people feel they need to argue with me in the comments about Bruce Lee. And what they don't realize is like, first of all, chuckle sticks 97 on YouTube. I don't even know who you are. And when I don't know who you are, your opinion matters very little. Oh, okay. Man. Because I, I value the opinion of people that I respect, but mainly I have to value the opinion of people that I even know. Okay. So I'm sorry, chuckle sticks 67. Uh, uh, with ten, with handle. with with ten digits after that, the gray you handle. know six five nine six or whatever. Like uh -huh. I, I don't know who you are, therefore you had have to pay me some money to give a shit about what you say. All, All right. right, first thing. Yeah. Um, second thing, I'm not trying to convince people that they need to like Bruce Lee. Like if someone just thinks Bruce Lee was just a movie star with no fighting ability, wasn't a real martial artist, like I'll still sleep at night. Right? So so it's like this weird thing. Like people are always messaging. No, Bruce Lee wasn't a real fighter or yeah, Bruce Lee was unbeatable or whatever. It's like, quit, quit your messaging. All right. Enjoy Bruce in any way you want. Yeah. But don't tell me how I have to enjoy Bruce Lee. All right. But also don't necessarily lump me in with uh, the delusional fanboy. So I'm the guy who did the drug letters video. I'm the guy who recently revealed the Coke spoon photo. Right. Oh, yeah. So I'm not someone who is incapable of talking about Bruce Lee warts and all. I, I think the fact that he was a human with foibles makes him all the more great. Because despite right. all that, he still did all these he great things, right? Off. So, but the fact that I will openly talk about the Bruce Lee drug letters or problems he had with his ego or maybe some less than stellar Bruce Lee stories doesn't mean that I'm a hater, all right? Okay, because you can like something like an adult, which is to look at it warts and all and still appreciate it. Or you like something like a child, which cannot have any faults. I, I've, I've outgrown this childlike uh, uh, infatuation with Bruce Lee and have an adult of infatuation with Bruce Lee, right? <laughs> yes. um, but, but it means that we can also have honest conversations about these things, right? So the problem is that you have these kind of two opposite ends of the spectrum that are the most vocal online. You have the delusional fanboys that like, you know, Anytime something bad comes out about Bruce Lee, they get so defensive. Bruce Lee could beat everyone anytime, any place. He was un unbeatable, all that kind of stuff, right? And then you have the people who are like, oh, Bruce Lee was just a fake, and he couldn't kick, and he couldn't do this, and he couldn't do that, right? He can't do nothing. And, and, and the problem is that both of these are the most vocal, and there's very little uh, the kind of level-headed conversation about Bruce Lee going on. And, and level-headed doesn't mean that you cannot be a big fan, right? So I... um. I had a comment, but I'm looking at the time and we're basically out of time. So I will. You have to get to your I, to I your have class. to teach yeah. another online class. I'm doing my monthly uh, Q&A class, which, by right. the way, if anyone is interested in doing every month, I have a Q&A session uh, pretty much the first Saturday of every month. It's live on Zoom so people can come in and ask me any questions, technical questions about training, beautiful, class, you know, uh, um, application questions, whatever. I usually kick it off with talking about a topic for about 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. And just to get the ball rolling and then people start writing in their questions. And then um, uh, I basically answer any questions people have. They can ask me stuff about the dummy, about cheese out, about how to train this with a partner. So it's, it's you know, for people who always want me to teach for free online, uh, uh, it's like, no, I prefer a much more interactive uh, medium with the students that I'm teaching rather than just teach a Paxo drill and then put it out there for for my fans to love it. And everyone who doesn't like my podcast to say that it totally sucks. Right. It's like, well, we'll do you know, like the Joker said, if you're good at anything, don't do it for free, right? So uh, the uh, Q&A class is really, uh, you can do it, I have a monthly subscription, which is really cheap. It's like even $13. Monthly subscription, you, you can do the Zoom class every month. Ask me whatever you want. And unlike the podcast where this is a discussion podcast, I'll actually show, you know, like I'll actually teach Wing Chun for people who have questions and stuff yeah. like that. And that's all I got to say about that.
All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Kung Fu Genius. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Kung Fu Genius. Hit that bell for notifications. Support us on Patreon. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Word is I'm a Kung Fu genius. Technique speaks for me, not lineage. Forget Jet Li, cause I'm the one. Many call me Sifu, but to you I'm Seagung. And I produce masters. You surpassed us. Your Kung Fu stiffer than corpse and caskets. City Wing Chung is the house I built. Violate the gate and your blood gets spilt. Alex Richter, always the victor.